Hi, and welcome to this week's episode. Today I want to talk to you about a really interesting supplement, and it's one that I take myself and I prescribe to many of our patients, which is red yeast rice. And this is interesting because it really illustrates how supplements and drugs can kind of walk a very fine line. Now, red yeast rice is classified as a supplement. It's sold over the counter. As it sounds, it's a plant extract. It comes from red rice. I'll show you a picture of what that looks like in the natural environment. And then it's fermented to produce substances called monocolons. There's particularly one called monocolon K, which has been clinically proven to lower cholesterol. Actually, this is where the interesting part lies. Monocolon K is exactly the same thing that is found in the prescription drug lovastatin, which is, of course, in the family of statins. So that's why it's a really interesting product that kind of walks the line between being a supplement and being a drug. Now, currently, as I mentioned, it is sold as a supplement, but suffice to say, it really works to lower cholesterol. So when we're taking red yeast rice, there's a bunch of things that we need to think about because we actually are taking a statin. So statins are drugs that lower cholesterol by inhibiting a certain enzyme. It's called HMG-CoA reductase. So these HMG-CoA reductase inhibitors are statins, and monocolon K is an HMG-CoA reductase inhibitor, therefore it is in the class of statins, but it occurs naturally in red rice. So in red yeast rice supplements, and we have to be very careful which ones we take, because in fact, we are taking a compound that acts on the liver exactly the same way that prescription drugs do. We need to be really careful where we get it from. So I'm gonna to talk to you about some of the pros and cons of red yeast rice and why it got very controversial and why you do actually need to be very careful if you do choose to take this. So I'm gonna just jump and tell you the one that I take. And as you know, I do like Thorn products. Now I'm not paid by Thorn, I just like their products. I find that they really work. I'm gonna give you an example of what happened in my case when I started taking this. Now this is Thorne's 900 milligram red yeast rice product. They call it Cole East 900 for obvious reasons. They also make one that has 600 milligrams of red yeast rice and I'll talk to you about why you might choose one dose over the other. Both of those are great products. There are probably others out there that are very good too, but you do need to be very cautious because these contain substances that really do have a profound effect on your body, hopefully in a good way if you're taking the right kind. Now this particular one has small amounts of monocolon K as well as 14 total monocolons, which are substances that can all act together to help lower cholesterol and improve heart health. And the 600 milligram product also has CoQ10 in it. Now, why would you want to add CoQ10? That's an interesting idea. Very clever, I think, because the same enzymes that inhibit cholesterol production also inhibit CoQ10 production. So CoQ10 is a very powerful antioxidant. And if you're taking a statin or Reggie's rice, you're potentially going to lower the CoQ10 in your body. So you do want to think about replacing that. So you might see some supplements have both together, which makes a lot of sense. So in my case, I've never had high cholesterol, but just doing this experiment on ourselves as we do in midlife, my LDL cholesterol started going up a little bit. It had always been less than 80, which is considered to be ideal. And it got up to 118. This was back in June of 2023. So my LDL was just a little bit high, and my ApoB was also a little bit high. It got up to 95. Now remember, ApoB travels around with LDL, but it's actually a more accurate predictor of heart health than LDL by itself. So nowadays we tend to follow ApoB more than LDL for predicting heart health, and I have lots of videos about that that you can refer to in the past. So my ApoB was 95 which isn't particularly high. It actually falls right in the middle of normal range, but ApoB, we really want to be as low as possible. LDL, I mentioned, was 118. When I checked it again in October, so just four months later, now I could have checked it after eight weeks, and in our patients, we've actually seen similar results in as little as two months. But in my case, I waited four months to check my labs again. My LDL had dropped to 78. 
So a 40 point reduction, which is a 35% reduction. And my ApoB dropped from 95 to 65, which is a 32% reduction. So really massive reduction. And I did absolutely nothing else differently. As you know, I already exercise a lot. I eat a pretty clean, almost solely plant-based diet. So there really wasn't much else that I could do with my lifestyle in order to prove my lipid panel. So Reggie's rice very likely was the single thing that made that change. Now, if I were a different patient with very high cholesterol, active heart disease, other risk factors for heart disease, absolutely, I would recommend seeing a cardiologist, following their recommendations, probably getting on a prescription statin. So I'm not suggesting that everybody take Reggie's rice and not take a prescription statin. But for people in my situation with just minimal elevation, it's certainly something that you could consider. So long as you take a very reputable product, Thorne certainly makes a very reputable product. We know that because we've tried it in hundreds of our patients as well as in my own body. And also Thorne does rigorous testing of their products. Another thing that's very important is a potential contaminant in Reggie's rice called citronin. Now citronin is a very powerful mycotoxin or muscle toxin that ultimately can damage the liver. So all Reggie's rice products need to be tested for citronin. There's an industry standard that citronin should be less than one part per million. And in Thorne's products, they actually require them to be less than 1 20th of that. So in that particular product, you can be certain that it does not have an elevated level of citronin and every batch is tested. So that made me very comfortable to choose that product. Now, another interesting thing is back in 2017, there was a study done on 28 different types of red yeast rice to look at the amount of monocolon K they had in them, which is the thing that's identical to lovastatin. Two of them had none. And the others had all kinds of crazy various amounts. So it was very clear at that point that these supplements need to be very closely watched because some of the supplements actually had so much monocolon K that it was clear that they were being supplemented with monocolon K. So it wasn't just naturally occurring Reggie's rice. It was Reggie's rice with additional monocolon K or lobostatin added to it. So you can see how that got pretty sticky in the FDA does not allow Reggie's rice products to have additional monocolon K added to them. So the Reggie's rice products that are currently available on the market and the ones that you should look for if you're purchasing them have naturally occurring monocolons, nothing added, no standardized amount that is titrated. Because in that case, we're, we're looking at something that really is a drug and the FDA would ban it altogether under that setting and require that we take a prescription statin. So you can kind of see how it walks a tightrope between being a drug and being a supplement, because this really is one supplement more than any other that I can think of that has a very clear benefit and also in that case could have some very clear side effects if it was misused. It's a very potent herbal supplement. So in that respect, it's very good, but you also need to be very careful. So what are the things you need to be careful of? I already mentioned, make sure you get it from a very reputable place because it does have a statin in it. Now we can talk about the word natural all day. It's a little bit of a marketing term, isn't it? We've talked about that in terms of hormones. What does natural mean? Well, it comes from a plant, but many drugs come from plants and then eventually they're synthesized in a lab to look exactly like what came from plants. So, you know, many or most drugs, back in the old days came from plant sources. That's how we got a lot of our medications, right? So just because it came from nature doesn't mean that it's safe. In fact, lots of natural things are highly toxic as we know. So don't get too wrapped up in the word natural. It does have a statin in it. Yes, it's a natural statin, but is it better or worse than a statin? Really, it had about the same effect in my body that taking a prescription statin would have. I mean, having a 35% reduction in your LDL and a 30% or 32% reduction in ApoB, that would be lucky to get on a prescription statin. So I could take a prescription statin, but taking Reggie's rice might be preferable for some people just based on their particular preferences. Understanding that you need to be followed by a doctor the same way that you would be if you took a statin, and that would mean checking your cholesterol, making sure that you don't have any 
contraindications or reasons why you shouldn't take it, like, for example, if you're pregnant, if you're breastfeeding, if you're taking another statin, if you have kidney or liver damage, I would certainly say if you have very elevated cholesterol or active heart disease, you need to be on a prescription statin and being followed by a cardiologist. But again, if you're somebody like me, certainly it's an option and I plan to keep taking it as long as I see that my blood work suggests that everything's fine. So what I will do is check my lipid panel at least every six months while I'm taking this supplement and check my liver enzymes because very rarely these drugs do work on the level of the liver. They could cause liver enzymes to go up. Very rarely could cause the kidneys to be affected. Now these are extremely rare things that I've never seen in our high number of hundreds of patients who are taking red yeast rice. Never seen any of those things. But just out of caution, I would certainly recommend doing that if you're taking red yeast rice because those things have been reported. Take it from a really good source. Make sure it doesn't have any appreciable citron in, in it. And then make sure that you're following other guidelines. Funny things like don't eat a grapefruit or drink grapefruit juice within four hours of taking red yeast rice or lovastatin or several other statins also fall into this group. And that's kind of a weird thing. Uh, grapefruit juice has a substance in it that slows down the breakdown of monocolon K. And so therefore you'd see an elevation of it in your blood. So in that respect, it makes you more sensitive to the drug. It elevates the drug levels in your blood and also could cause toxicity more easily than if you weren't eating or drinking grapefruit. So there's some subtle things that you need to know when you're taking red yeast rice and potential interactions with other things, the same as you would have if you took a statin. So it is something that I think is very safe so long as it's monitored very carefully and that you're followed by a physician while you're taking it. So in our practice, we will continue to recommend red yeast rice, particularly the Thorn brand. I mentioned differences in dosing. There's a 600 milligram with CoQ10 added to it. There's also the 900 milligram product and these milligrams are applying to the amount of red yeast rice in the product, not the amount of monocolon K. If you ask the pharmacologists who make this stuff, they're not measuring the amount of monocolon K because it's naturally occurring. And we can just say it is in very small trace amounts, but due to the presence of multiple other monocolons, it works. And we can see that based on my blood work and, and that of many other patients who've taken it before. In fact, there've been numerous studies that have shown significant cholesterol reduction with red yeast rice. So 600 milligrams once a day, 900 milligrams once a day, those are common doses. I have a couple of patients who might take it twice a day, but again, I would suggest that if your cholesterol is that high that you're not seeing results with six to 900 milligrams a day, you probably need to be on a prescription statin. And then as far as the reasons why people don't want to take statins, I hear regularly, I don't want to take a statin because I heard that it causes muscle fatigue, joint pain, tiredness, fatigue, occasionally can cause liver damage. These issues can happen, but keep in mind those are very rare. On statin drugs, we see five to 10% at most patients have those kind of side effects. Most patients by far take prescription statins with no side effects, and they are remarkably good at lowering cholesterol. So I wouldn't be afraid to take a statin if that is something that your doctor recommends. But also keep in mind that other options like red yeast rice can lower cholesterol very effectively, arguably with the same potential side effects, but without question, red yeast rice is less potent than prescription statins. So you are gonna see a lower incidence of those type of side effects for sure. In fact. In our entire practice, I haven't had one single patient complain of those common side effects like muscle pain, fatigue, joint pain, tiredness, those type of things that one might associate with a statin. So I think the answer is that if you took enough red yeast rice, you would put yourself at risk of those side effects. Because remember, it is the same identical compound that is in lovastatin. But in reality, taking the amount that you get from a common supplement, like the ones that I mentioned, be very unlikely that you would have those side effects. Other reported side effects are GI side effects, like stomach discomfort, reflux, anything to do with the GI tract. I've never seen that either, but if you did start taking red yeast rice and you had any of those things, obviously you would want to stop it. So if I personally had to stop taking red yeast rice, 
Would I take a low-dose statin because my ApoB is 90? It was, 95 actually. The answer is probably yes, uh, because the benefit from dropping ApoB to as low as possible in the 60s, for example, has really been shown to be you know, pretty indisputable for lowering our risk of heart disease. So the whole point of taking any of these things, whether it's reduced rice or a statin, is to lower our risk of heart disease. So if we can make our ApoB as low as 60 with a supplement that has no side effects for me, my liver's healthy, everything else is good, I think that's definitely something to consider. So don't rule it out when you look on Google and you study Reggie's rice, you hear all kinds of opinions ranging from how it's the best thing in the world to don't ever take it. Uh, so there's a lot of opinions out there, but I really think the most important thing is to get it from a very reputable source and to make sure you are followed by a physician if you're taking it because let's face it, it is a statin and there's nothing wrong with that. So that's what I have to say about Reggie's rice. I hope you learned something today. If you did, please share it with your friends, and I can't wait to see you next week.